Hey friends, we're here to talk about uh, maybe pulling more tone, pulling better tone out of the guitar. One thing that we need to do is, I tell people, hit it like you mean it. Hit it hard enough with enough momentum behind you. You'll have to watch the, uh, <clears throat> the timing video. Hit it with enough momentum behind it that you're striking the string with enough velocity that it actually activates the wood tones. Otherwise, you might as well be playing plywood because you're just going to hear what your strings sound like. You know, if I have this tiny little hit, I, I don't. I, I just know that my what my strings sound like. It's when I. It's when I did. All I did was widen the swing. You heard that? It came out more. I didn't widen it much. There's as wide as I can go at that speed. But it it went from tiny don't listen to me to ah, I, I'm, he may be worth listening to and to I'm gonna put it in your face and when I get it up that that to that kind of volume you can tell what your strings sound like mine are dead you can uh, uh, it's time to change them I use DR strings they last a long time um, uh, you can uh, you can hear what the tone woods and that, that's when you can differ differentiate the different uh, guitars you know because they all sound different and uh, uh, you got to wonder about the tone woods but uh, uh, I'm a I'm a Brazilian rosewood guy, so I I know that. And then uh, this one is a uh, red spruce top. Uh, made this guitar is made by Bob Thompson and Larry Thompson in uh, West Virginia. Okay, so we're talking about tone. So I want you to hit hit the note not with muscle hard, but I want you to hit it with a wide enough swing that that you you can activate the wood. You can get it vibrating. Okay, now when I play, uh, I'm just going to talk, this will be real short. I, when I play uh, my fiddle tune stuff or my uh, bluegrass guitar solos, I'm going to be right near the edge of the sound hole. Okay, on the edge. Now my hand is, my arm is resting on the side of the guitar so that it's going to swing on an angle. So when I play in the bass, I'm, I'm past the edge of the sound hole. When I'm in the first string, I'm at the, at the edge of the sound hole. It'll make an arc across there. Okay, you, I, I don't want to try to uh, coordinate keeping it in a straight line right here. I just don't, I don't have to fool with it. So uh, I wouldn't worry about that much, but, it's, but the tones are different when you move just an inch. So if I come back to the bridge... <laughs> That's where I do my cross picking. For that run, I moved up farther. Here I want to stay soft. Whatever I'm doing. <laughs> so but cross picking stuff, let me find one that. Uh... So, in cross picking stuff, I'm going to be back to the bridge because you want a stiffer sound there. You want it to sound like a sewing machine. So, I'm going to, I'm going to straighten out my thumb so it doesn't have the ability to have articulation. My notes are going to sound like a sewing machine. <laughs> but I'll be back at the bridge. Fiddle tune stuff, I'm on the edge of the sound hole. When I do waltzes or slow ballads, really slow stuff, I'll come out more over the sound hole. And that's going to give me this dark sound. It didn't like it when I. So uh, uh, there's your different tones. Now it all depends on the swing of your right hand and how consistent you make it. In the uh, in the 
tone uh, in the timing video, uh, it's just a little short lesson. It's a freebie on my site. T check it out. We're talking about playing with momentum in your right hand, so you're not using muscle. It's when you it's when you use muscle to hit something. Uh, here's here's the way I would play uh, like uh, East Tennessee blues. <laughs> If I use muscle with it to get my volume up, first my toes are curling back, and my jaw is starting to cinch up because I'm driving those notes with muscle. And in just a few measures, my right arm is going to start to knot up right about in here because you need to have all this stuff loose. It has to be loose. So that's uh, uh, that's a different lesson. That's on the look at the grip, look at um, timing, and then on this one, work your sweet zones for where you want to play. I didn't do this one. If you're going to play like uh, cross pickings back here, fiddle tunes are right here, waltzes are right here, and the Holiday Inn is right here. Then I'll play that. See what I mean? Welcome to the Holiday Inn. Just kidding. Okay, so work those areas. Uh, learn your zones uh, for the particular style of song that you're playing. It, it, it's real important. Now, you also have uh, some degree of uh, tone that's going to come off of your, uh, your left hand, and that's by constantly being aware, particularly in the beginning, where your fingers are lying in the frets. You don't want to, like if I'm holding a C chord, I don't want to have my, my fifth string back here because I have to clamp down really hard to, in order for it to be clear. What I usually show people, push your finger up as far on the, on the uh, say the fifth string third fret as you possibly can. Now, back it down so that the note, so that you're barely holding the note, but it's still clear, okay? And then come halfway back in the fret, but don't change the muscle attack of your finger. And see, it's, it's gone. Because it takes, it's right next to the fret that's the easiest place to push. So you always aim your fingers up as far in the frets as you possibly can. The other thing you do with left hand tone and timing is you hold your notes out so they just about ring on top of the next one. Now here, I had no choice but to cut them loose, but I gave them a whole, they're eighth notes, so I gave them an entire eighth bracket of the measure. I didn't go like that, which gave him a 16th note with a 16th note rest after it. So hold your notes, get maximum sustain with the left hand, play the notes so as many as you can that will ride on top of the next one without being in the way. Like if I'm playing a, um, a G run, but then it goes to, to uh, E. Goes to E. I'm not going to hold the G notes against the E chord. I won't let that ring because it, the it, G note against an E chord is going to be a dissonant. Because it, uh, with an E, for example, E the G is sharp, so that that I wouldn't. It would get in the way, so I wouldn't do that. But you do want to uh, have maximum sustain because the more you sustain, the better you're going to sound, the smoother you're going to sound. So you do that by playing really slow. D hung out until I hit the E and then I released it. The E uh, is still ringing when I hit this D. Okay, so it, it, it all smooths everything out. The more you can have sustain, uh, the, the smoother it's going to sound. I always tell people, I said, that the more sustain you have, the better you sound. It's so important they put a sustain pedal on a piano. They wouldn't have done it otherwise. Okay, so watch your zones, your picking zones. Left hand maximum sustain. Push up as far in the frets as you can. And I hope this little guide helped you.